the magazines for wrestling fans, The Wrestler and Inside Wrestling. Hi, I'm your host, Bill After, and we're here to bring you exclusive interviews and up-to-the-minute news about what's happening in the wrestling world. And now, here's what's happening, baby. We're in the dressing room at Madison Square Garden, and our guest is Crazy Luke Graham. I'd like to correct you right off the bat there, Bill. That's not just Luke Graham, that's the fabulous Luke Graham. Luke, both Eddie and Jerry Graham are known now to be clean wrestlers. Is Luke Graham going to clean up, or are you going to keep wrestling dirty like this? Man, what do you mean clean myself? Well, you know, getting I'm a, a scientific wrestler. I well, you gouge eyes myself. and you and you kick. That's, that's not considered that's scientific. Is it? That's, that's your own opinion, sir. I'm one of the greatest scientific wrestlers in wrestling today. You mean today. you, like Lou Albano, think that I need glasses and just I'm saying it wrong? Just a minute, don't be mentioning Lou Albano's name. Talk with a little respect. Keep your mouth shut for two minutes. I have watched Lou Graham many a time, and I have never yet seen this man use any foul tactics. His character is beyond reproach, and I'll tell you this: he's perhaps one of the greatest wrestlers in the world today and it will be a pleasure and an honor to be at his side i appreciate talking to you right here about luke graham mm -hmm. not that i'm with you only that i'm talking about luke i understand so remember from now on when you speak his name speak it with a little reverence and keep your voice toned down you know if lou albano wasn't so modest he'd, hey, he'd tell you how great i really am Incidentally, Lou Albano says that Tarzan Tyler's shoulders were not pinned to the mat in his match with Pedro Morales. Here's Albano to explain. They're trying to, I don't know what it is here in New York. We seem to get a raw deal every time we're in here. I don't want to say it's prejudice. I don't want to say it that, I don't know what to say, but Tyler's shoulders were definitely three to four inches off that mat. Right, now Gorilla, Gorilla Monsoon stood in the corner, and he actually looked, of, he had a look of shock on his face. I don't think he believed himself. Monsoon looked, and I saw a dumbfounded look on his face. I don't think he believed that Morales won the match. There was definite proof, I have photostatic proof, as Gorilla? I said, that Tyler's shoulders were not on the mat. They were three to four inches up. I'm going to produce these films on TV in front of my public. Boss, I want please, the people to judge. Let me see what Please, boss. Boss, please. Can I say one thing, please? Let me say one thing. I don't want to say one thing till I view the films. After I see the films, then I'll be I'll be either too willing to consent to what you've said. First time in your life, you've spoken like a true gentleman, and I respect you for that monsoon. I want to see you stand from the outside, judge these films, and give your truthful opinion. I will, we'll not, get I will not be the I will not be the sole judge. Please, please, Buzz, let me say a word here. Go I ahead, didn't, go ahead, I didn't want to let you down out there. I didn't want to let you down out there. My shoulders were off the mat. I didn't take. I, I got beat out there. You did not get beat. You were not pinned. Your shoulders were off the mat. We have proof of this. I'll take this to court if I have to. I'll take this before Willie Gilsenberg, president of the World Wide Wrestling Federation. I'll tell you the truth. I'm very disgusted and upset. I don't know what to say. And uh, I'd like to drop it right in here. Hey, wrestling fans, in the June issue of The Wrestler, read the full terrifying story of how the Grand Wizard took a football player by the name of Bob Windham and turned him into bruising Black Jack Mulligan. Also, Confessions of an Ex-Champion, a startling interview we did with former champion Bruno Sammartino. All this and much, much more, all happening in the June issue of The Wrestler, on sale right now. Well, this is uh, Phil Apter, and we're speaking here with the Grand Wizard. How are you, Grand Wizard? Delightful, fantastic, supreme, and great as always. How else could I ever be? I wanted to ask you a question. Lou Albano is now managing Tarzan Tyler. What do you think of this team, this combination? I think probably it is the second best combination in the wrestling world today. Who might be the first? You are as stupid as you look, Mr. Bill Apter. Who do you think is the greatest? The Grand Wizard and beautiful Bobby, of course. But right behind us and very close behind us is the dynamic duo of Lou Albano and the fantastic Tarzan Tyler. Okay, we're speaking with Big Gorilla Monsoon. Gorilla, do you have any idols? Who were your idols when you were coming up? My idols in professional wrestling? In professional wrestling. Uh, 
I would say that probably San Martino uh, was an idol of mine. Uh, I've always uh, idolized someone who not only was an outstanding uh, wrestler in the ring, but someone who was also outstanding out of the ring. And uh, Bruno was a type of a champion who was champion 24 hours a day, not just from the time he stepped into the dressing room and began to put his working clothes on. Uh, Bruno was a type of champion that uh, you could meet on the street, uh, you could meet in any social gathering at any convention, and as soon as he walked into the room, he commanded the attention of everyone in the building. Hey, wrestling fans, remember, if you have a question you'd like us to ask your favorite wrestler, jot it down on a postcard and send it off to TV Sports, Box 58, Rockville Center, 11571, New York. If your question's used on the air, we'll send you absolutely free the current issue of Inside Wrestling or The Wrestler. Till two weeks from now, this is Bill After, along with the staff of The Wrestler, Inside Wrestling, and promoter Vince McMahon, wishing you a very pleasant evening. By the magazines for wrestling fans, Inside Wrestling and The Wrestler. Hi, I'm your host, Bill Apter, and we're here to bring you exclusive interviews and up-to-the-minute news about what's happening in the wrestling world. And now, here's what's happening, baby. Okay, this is Bill Apter, and we're speaking here with the newly returned Black Demon. Great Black Demon, I told you that once before. Can't you remember anything? All right, now, another question. You seem to have uh, dropped out of sight just when Pedro Morales won the title. Now, this seemed kind of fishy. Is there anything behind this? Are you insinuating something? Well, uh, a lot of the fans think that you're running from the new champion. Me running from Morales? Are you kidding? I'm chasing him. I'm chasing Morales. I'm not running from him. You wear this headgear in New York where they don't permit you to wear the mask. Now, a lot of the fans think you wear the headgear because you have no brains. Is there any truth to this? Who said that? The fans. These fans. are the cards we've been getting. Not my fans. Who says are you talking about? Do you have fans? My fans. Listen, my fans love me. They write me a basket full of fan letters every day, every week. And on a week's time, I can count on a count on a mail, fan mail from my wonderful fans. Then don't forget, it's the great black demon. Not black demon. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Okay, stepping up to our wrestler microphones now is the very beautiful world heavyweight women's champion, the fabulous Moolah. How are you, Moolah? Hi, Bill. I'm fine. How are you? Okay, Moolah, there's been a lot of uh, controversy over the last, gee, maybe 20 years about getting women wrestlers into New York. Why aren't women wrestlers allowed in New York? Well, I don't know, Bill. It seems like there's an old law from a long time ago, but I can't understand why people don't become modern. They know we can't go by those rules all our lives. And if the people in New York would go strong enough and contact the commission about this, I believe it would help us, and I would really appreciate it. Okay, one last question. What's your opinion of mixed matches that have been happening, like in Texas and Florida, a man wrestler and a woman against a man and a woman? Well, I don't know. I, uh, whatever the public likes, I think that uh, that's what should be done. Thank you very much, the fabulous Moolah. Right now, our guest is Bob Root. Bob, we've been getting a lot of letters saying that you've turned into a dirty wrestler. Is this true? Uh, I've heard a lot of people say that uh, they think that the style is controversial, but uh, I have to disagree. Now, Bob, you have this hole that everyone thinks is one of the most brutal holes in wrestling. It's sort of a neck breaker. Could you describe it? Well, what it really is, Bill, is a shoulder breaker, and it's, uh, it's, it's I bring a man's shoulder where it joins his neck in the, down on my knee with the, all the weight of his body and all the force that I can generate downwards. The reason that I've uh, perfected this hole is because when I wrestle a man and I beat him, I don't want to wrestle him again because uh, that's just like running in place. After I beat a man, I don't want him to want me to wrestle me again. And uh, with this type of hold, uh, it's a one-shot deal. I haven't had anybody come back and challenge me. The Wrestler is being brought to you by the magazines for wrestling fans, Inside Wrestling and The Wrestler. And remember, if you have a question you'd like us to ask your favorite wrestler, jot it down on a postcard and send it off to TV Sports, Box 58, Rockville Center, 11571, New York. If your question's used on the air, we'll send you absolutely free the current issue of Inside Wrestling or The Wrestler. Okay, we're here with the Grand Wizard. Grand Wizard, after the uh, match at Madison Square Garden between Beautiful Bobby and Jim Valiant, a lot of the fans were still saying that they thought that Jim Valiant was better looking at than Beautiful Bobby. Well, Bill, ignorance is bliss, and there are a lot of blissful New Yorkers. Okay, and finally, the big one at Madison Square Garden on July 24th, 
Bruno Sammartino, former champion against Blackjack Mulligan, making his return into the garden. Well, Bill, once you start downhill, there's only one way to go, and that's further down, 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 and Blackjack's going to help push Bruno San Martino the rest of the way. You think he's pushing Bruno down, Bruno's not pushing him further down? Oh, don't be ridiculous. When Blackjack gets done pushing, Bruno's going to end right up back over in a bruisy Italy, the first man to cross the Atlantic by car. That's about all the time we have. We'd like to thank you for listening in. And remember, in two weeks, we'll be back with another edition of The Wrestler. Till two weeks from now, this is Bill Actor, along with promoter Vince McMahon and the staff of Inside Wrestling and The Wrestler, wishing you a very pleasant evening. He's a little loose upstairs. Here. I think he's uh, got a lot of... He's about two bricks short of a full load. Mom will beat you in Philadelphia and New York, too. This fan seems to know what he's talking about. Well, I don't know. I guess he, uh, his head is swelled up from his own publicity. Okay, well, thank you, sir. Everybody knows that Bulldog Brower is not right in the head. Okay. Well, I consider the source. You know, you can't battle a guy that's not mentally equipped. Hey, wrestling fans, be sure to go down to your favorite newsstand and pick up a copy of the March edition of The Wrestler. Such great articles as Jack Briscoe Tells It Like It Is, an exclusive interview with wrestling's brightest prospect. Also, what the fans really think of Bruno San Martino. A candid look at what the guy sitting next to you really thinks of the former champion. All that and much more in the March issue of The Wrestler, on sale right now. Wrestling fans, remember, if you have a question you'd like us to ask your favorite wrestler, drop us a postcard at TV Sports, Box 58, Rockville Center, 11571, New York. If we use your question on the air, you'll receive absolutely free the current issue of Inside Wrestling or The Wrestler. We'll give you that address again at the end of the program. This week's question was sent in by Michael Nazarvich, who wanted to know if we could get in touch with Eddie Graham and ask him if he has any plans to team up again with his brother Jerry. Well, I doubt it very seriously. Um, Jerry has suffered uh, several ring injuries, etc., and, and uh, he's not in the condition that he used to be, and I, I doubt seriously if he ever will be. Hey, wrestling fans, in the March issue of Inside Wrestling, there's an article that reveals why Bruno Sammartino made a very big mistake in discovering John L. Sullivan. Also features on Bulldog Brower and a chat with Lou Albano, why he traded Crusher Verdue to Tony Angelo. Here's a segment of that. So what has happened to Crusher Verdue in the show? Those contract was purchased, as I said, by Tony Angelo, and he has gone to Europe on an extensive tour of Europe and the Orient. Do we hear that Verdue is kind of angry that you did trade him? Is there any truth to this? Well, he was kind of peeved, but I felt that he didn't have the mental capacity to listen to me. All this and much more in the great March edition of Inside Wrestling, on sale right now. Hey, wrestling fans, here's two interesting segments we thought we'd bring your way. Inside Wrestling asked Dick the Bulldog Brower what he thinks of former Mr. America, Tony Marino, and then we went on to ask the Grand Wizard where he discovered Black Jack Mulligan. Well, Tony Morales, uh, what's his name? Marino. 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 Uh, he's got a fantastic physique. He's a mirror athlete. He's not a wrestler. All he wants to do is pose in the mirror and say how great he is. Tony Marino might have been a Mr. America, but they'll call him Mrs. America when I'm done with him. Right. Well, how did you discover Blackjack? I found him of all places, the most unusual one I have ever found any wrestler that I have managed in the past, and that is past. I found him in a rodeo. I took one look at his size, and I knew that this man was well on the way to becoming a great wrestling star under my guidance. Hey, wrestling fans, before we leave, we'd like to remind you that Irish Mike Rosenberg has promoted a great show for this Saturday afternoon, February 27th, at Sunnyside Garden, 2 o'clock. Pedro Morales will defend his championship against the Canadian Wolfman. That's at Sunnyside, Saturday afternoon, 2 o'clock. And remember, if you have a question you'd like us to ask your favorite wrestler, drop a postcard to TV Sports, Box 58, Rockville Center, 11571, New York. If we use your question on the air, you'll receive absolutely free the current issue of Inside Wrestling or The Wrestler. Hey, we're just about out of time. This is Bill After at Ringside, hoping you'll join us again next week for another edition of Inside Wrestling. Man, and by the magazines for wrestling fans, Inside Wrestling and The Wrestler. Hi, I'm your host, Bill After, and each week we'll be down here at Ringside bringing you exclusive interviews and up-to-the-minute news on exactly what's happening in the wrestling world.
And now, here's what's happening, baby. Well, March 15th is drawing closer and closer as Pedro Morales is scheduled to put his title on the line against giant Black Jack Mulligan. We spoke with Mulligan's manager, the Grand Wizard, and asked his opinion of Morales and some not-so-popular wrestlers. What do you think of Gorilla Monsoon? As little as possible. All right, Bulldog Brower. The world's most retarded mental midget. If you opened up his head, you would find a brain approximately the size of the head of a very small pin. Okay. The Lord made a beautiful body. They put a lot of muscle in it. He has two muscular arms, two muscular legs, and an empty head. Hmm. All right, what about Tony Marino? Who? Tony Marino, Mr. former Mr. America. You know what former means. Former is like yesterday's newspaper. Yesterday's newspaper is good for one thing, and that's wrapping garbage in it and throwing it away. All right, Chief J. Strongbow. Well, my man is a cowboy, and you want to know what we did to the Indians. Okay, and one final last one, the man who says he's... Wrestler, a new bi-weekly feature brought to you by the magazines for wrestling fans, The Wrestler and Inside Wrestling. Hi, I'm your host, Bill Apter, and we're here to bring you exclusive interviews and up-to-the-minute news on exactly what's happening in the wrestling world. And now, here's what's happening, baby. Monday night, promoter Vince McMahon is bringing some new faces to the garden. Bob Roop from Florida and Mike Pappas, the Golden Greek. Here's an interview we did with both Roop and Mike Pappas just about a week ago. Okay, we're speaking here with Bob Roop. Bob, how are you feeling? Real good. Okay, Bob, uh, could you give us a little bit about your background? How did Bob Roop get started in wrestling? Well, I wrestled for 15 years as an amateur, starting way back in grade school. I wrestled in the 1968 Olympics in Mexico City, and I finished up as an amateur. I won the 1969 Greco-Roman National Championships, and I met Eddie Graham at those championships and uh, decided to turn pro. Okay, Bob, getting into your personal life a little bit, what do you like to do in your spare time? What are Bob Roop's hobbies? Well, my main hobbies are training for wrestling. I like, uh, I like to train. Uh, wrestling amateur style to keep my uh, my reflexes and my conditioning at top uh, top speed I like to run and uh, if you're a full-time professional wrestler you don't have a great deal of time for outside hobbies if you want to know the truth okay we're speaking here with a newcomer to the New York area Mike the Golden Greek Pappas how are you Mike all right thank you a lot of the wrestlers are here are very big and you're much shorter. Do you feel that uh, it's a handicap coming against a guy that's much bigger than you, like a blackjack mulligan? Well, I tell you they're, they're big, but let's say like uh, size don't make any, any difference now. Let's say like uh, I know there are a lot of people bigger than me that can uh, out wrestle me and all that, but uh, uh, the only thing for me is uh, anytime I go in the ring, I, I don't care. I, I don't think anybody has the biggest desire than me just to win. Okay, once again, we're speaking here with very popular Chief J. Strongbow. How are you feeling today, Chief? I feel great. Okay, Chief, at Madison Square Garden, uh, a very funny situation is coming up. Chief J. Strongbow is meeting Cowboy Blackjack Mulligan, and the Grand Wizard has told us that you know what the Cowboys did to the Indians. What's your opinion on this match coming up? How many years ago was that? Many years ago. Well, this is a present time. It's uh, going to be a test for me, there's no doubt about that, but uh, I have comforts in myself, so that's the main thing, I guess. Okay, we're back here with, uh, it's our pleasure to be speaking with the Grand Wizard. Oh, how right you are. We've just spoken to Chief J. Strongbow. Well, everybody has their bad days. He's quite confident that uh, he can defeat Blackjack Mulligan no matter how big Mulligan is. He says he'll chalk up a victory for the Indians this time. Well, all I can tell you is there are a lot more cowboys in this country that there are, than there are Indians, and you know who took care of the Indians. Say, wrestling fans, if you picked up the June issue of The Wrestler, in that issue you can read the full terrifying story of how the Grand Wizard created Black Jack Mulligan. Also, Confessions of an Ex-Champion, an exclusive interview we did with Bruno Sammartino. All this and much, much more in the June issue of The Wrestler on sale right now. And now, wrestling fans, let's listen in as Tony Marino and Lou Albano continue their feud. I was talking about Pedro Morales and Bruno San Martino. 
Do you want to wrestle Tarzan Tyler? That bleach blind, I'd wrestle him any time, anywhere. I don't care if you resent it or not, you fat pig. I take it back. You know what? If you keep talking, you're going to disappear because all your hot air is going to be gone all together. So you better shut up while you're still around. Uh, talk about class. How can a guy come and just interrupt a conversation without even being asked? I, I must admit he is as classy as Bulldog Growler. Well, that's no class at all. I would appreciate it if you wouldn't ask me for any interviews anymore yourself. You can't see, number one. You don't know what you're doing, number two, and you got a Mickey Mouse operation there. So don't ask me for any more interviews yourself. Ah. You know what, Tony? If nobody asked Lou Albano to talk, he'd die. Because all he can do is talk. He can't wrestle anymore. He's too fat. That's why he's managing. You got that? Yes. What do you think he's managing for? Because he's too fat. He can't wrestle. He can't even get through the ropes. There they are, Tony Marino and Lou Albano. Hey, remember, if you have a question you'd like us to ask your favorite wrestler, jot it down on a postcard and send it off to TV Sports, Box 58, Rockville Center, 11571, New York. If your question's used on the air, we'll send you absolutely free the current issue of Inside Wrestling or The Wrestler. Till two weeks from now, this is Bill After, along with the staff of The Wrestler and Inside Wrestling, wishing you a very pleasant evening. At the Garden on Monday night, we spoke with manager Lou Albano, who let us in on this top secret. As you know, I've purchased the uh, contract of uh, Bulldog Brower, Dick Bulldog Brower. Mm. I've noticed in this man uh, a definite uh, a championship caliber type person, and uh, I've, I've gone a long way to try to negotiate with him. It's been very difficult to get together with Brower because uh, uh, he seems to have some uh, some difficulty in negotiating and talking and speaking clearly. He's uh, He has uh, some very peculiar ways, but... These will not in any way hurt him in his uh, bid for the championship. I'm sure here I have a world champion. Until next week, this is Bill After down at ringside inviting you to join us for another edition of Inside Wrestling. And by the magazines for wrestling fans, Inside Wrestling and The Wrestler. Bill After We'll be down here at ringside bringing you up to the minute news and exclusive interviews on exactly what's happening in the wrestling world. And now, here's what's happening, baby. Well, as you know, in the past few weeks, the Grand Wizard has been yelling at us that we haven't been too kind to beautiful Bobby. Well, this morning, we were shocked to receive a phone call from the Grand Wizard, and we happened to have our tape recorder handy at that very moment. Inside Wrestling. Well, yes. How dare you? How dare you sit there and face me and tell me that you honestly think that there is anybody from the world like beautiful Bobby. You have been knocking beautiful Bobby. You have been knocking black, black American. And when you do that, young man, you knock me like grand wizard and I don't like that. You compare the beauty of beautiful Bobby to some of these other idiots around. People like Super Dog Blower and a Steven character. Why, that's ridiculous. Now, in your heart, you know I'm right, don't you? Hey, wait, wait, wait a minute. Tonight, beautiful Bobby is going to be wrestling Pedro Morales. Exactly. That is yeah. just a fancy something. Now, you've made me happy. You have made me happy finally. Tonight is the night. And, dear, let me tell you something. Tonight, the seventh, Wednesday night, happens to be my birthday. And beautiful Bobby knows what I want for a birthday present. A gift, a gift that only beautiful Bobby can give me. And that is the World Heavyweight Wrestling Championship, which beautiful Bobby will take, take bodily from Mr. Pedro Morales. Bobby would have loved to have been here to talk to you personally, and I was going to let him. But unfortunately, he's at the hairdresser's getting his hair done for his big client tonight. And may I say in conclusion, young man, it has indeed, and I mean this in all sincerity and honesty, mm -hmm. it has been a pleasure and a privilege for you to hear my voice on this interview.
Hey, wrestling fans, due to the fantastic response of our contest to name the mystery wrestler, promoter Mike Rosenberg and Inside Wrestling are extending the prize list. Listen to this. The grand prize winner will receive two ringside seats to Sunnyside Garden Saturday afternoon, April 24th. He'll also receive the current issue of Inside Wrestling and The Wrestler and an autographed program. Now, listen to this. Ten runner-ups will all receive an autographed program of The Wrestlers on the card that day. Here's the mystery voice. Listen to it. Then we'll come back and give you the address where to send your contest entries. All right, are you after anyone in particular in this particular area? No, no, they're just the competition's so keen and so great that I'm just here. Uh, what if you can, lose if you must, but you know, my models always cheat. And well, there's the mystery voice. Who do you think it is? Well, jot it down on a postcard. Be sure to put down your name, address, and telephone number, and send it off to TV Sports, Box 58, Rockville Center, 11571, New York. All entries must be postmarked no later than April 17th. Bulldog Brower is always telling everyone he's the most successful wrestler in the world. So we decided to take our inside wrestling microphones into the dressing room and ask Brower why he thinks he's so successful. Because I'm successful because I'm the toughest, roughest wrestler that's in this profession today. And the wrestlers around here now, as far as I'm concerned, there's none of them in this area. And this whole area is supposed to be the big time wrestling. Well, the only big time wrestler around here is Dick the Bulldog Flower. And you take these guys like this Tony Marino and this other uh, world champion, Pedro Morales. I am the world champion, not him. Pedro Morales, as far as I'm concerned, he can't lace up my boots. Hey, wrestling fans, here's fantastic news. This Saturday, April 10th, Sunnyside Garden, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, Dick the Bulldog Brower goes against Pedro Morales for the World's Heavyweight Championship. A couple of days ago, we spoke with Pedro and asked him what's happening with him and Brower. Well, I don't know. I think he's a bit instigate. All the time when I'm in the ring, he's always coming around and uh, bother, you know, my match. And uh, I don't like that. I don't think I care about him and I don't think he care about me either. I think we're in the same boat. Before we leave you, wrestling fans, we want to remind you to go down to your favorite newsstand and pick up the sensational May issues of Inside Wrestling and The Wrestler. In Inside Wrestling, the inside story of how Pedro Morales became the champion of the world, and a special article in The Wrestler, why Pedro Morales really had to win that belt. That's The Wrestler and Inside Wrestling on sale right now at your favorite newsstand. Until next week, this is Bill After and the staff of Inside Wrestling wishing you a pleasant evening.
sure to pick up the May editions of Inside Wrestling and The Wrestler. In Inside Wrestling, the complete story of three different champions in 21 days. Have a title pass from Bruno San Martino to Ivan Koloff and then to Pedro Morales, plus many other features. In the May issue of The Wrestler, you'll find out the real reason why Bruno San Martino lost his title and why Pedro Morales had to get that belt. That's the May issues of Inside Wrestling and The Wrestler on sale right now. We're speaking here with the Grand Loser. During our recent match with Beautiful Bobby, the fans kept yelling out, We want Morales! We want Morales! What's what's going on? What's this all about? Bill, I am ashamed that you are publicly flaunting your ignorance in your public space. Can't you realize what these wrestling fans want? They want what every red-blooded wrestling fan wants. They want to see Beautiful Bobby get his just reward, and that is the World Wrestling Championship. Oh, thank you so much, Grand Wizard. It's been a real pleasure. It has, as always, for you to hear my pear-shaped, dulcet, beautiful, baritone tones. Hey, wrestling fans, Saturday is the last day we can accept postcards for the Mystery Voice Contest being sponsored by promoter Mike Rosenberg and Inside Wrestling. One grand prize winner will receive two free passes for the April 24th matinee at Sunnyside. He'll also receive the current issues of Inside Wrestling and The Wrestler and an autograph program. Ten runner-ups will all receive autograph programs of The Wrestlers on that card that day. Here's the Mystery Voice. Listen to it. Are you after anyone in particular in this particular area? No, no, they're just, the competition is so keen and so great that I'm just here. Uh, what if you can, if you must, but you know, my mind is always cheered. Well, who do you think it is? Oh, jot it down on a postcard and send it off to TV Sports, Box 58, Rockville Center, 11571, New York. Maybe you'll be the grand prize winner. Before we leave wrestling fans, a couple of weeks ago we were speaking with promoter Vince McMahon at Madison Square Garden and we asked him if there'll ever be a match between Pedro Morales and former champion Bruno San Martino. Uh, I feel that's uh, uh, not only likely, there's a possibility of that. The, uh, Bruno is in the uh, uh, peak of his career and in my opinion he's a, he's a greater wrestler today than when he was an undefeated Roger. And that's what's happening, baby. Want to remind you to pick up the current issues of Inside Wrestling and The Wrestler on sale right now at your favorite newsstand. And be sure to enter the Mystery Voice Contest. Send your contest entries to TV Sports, Box 58, Rockville Center, 11571, New York. Till next week, this is Bill Actor and the staff of Inside Wrestling and The Wrestler wishing you a pleasant evening. Brought to you by Vince McMahon and by the magazines for wrestling fans, Inside Wrestling and The Wrestler. Hi, I'm your host, Bill After, and each week we'll be down here at ringside bringing you exclusive interviews and up-to-the-minute news on exactly what's happening in the wrestling world. And now, here's what's happening, baby. A lot of controversy's been coming up about that Blackjack mulligan Pedro Morales match. Fans want to know why Mulligan didn't use that iron claw hold of his. So earlier this morning, we got in touch with the Grand Wizard, and we asked him. Hard head. Very typical Pedro Morales. You can't squeeze a vacuum that's made out of steel. And that's obviously something that we hadn't counted on. I thought that he would have a head like any normal, average human being. But I forgot myself and realized that it was Pedro Morales. The next time, I'll have a counter to that. Okay, another question that keeps coming up. The fans would like to know where you discovered beautiful Bobby. Where would you find beauty such as that, Bill? Only... A beauty parlor, I know. No, know. an art museum where there are treasures. Beautiful Bobby, the closest thing in the world to a male Venus de Milo. He is a walking David, Michelangelo's David. A combination of that plus, have you noticed beautiful Bobby's smile? All right, well, I want to uh, thank you very much. Uh and say this time, I think it's been your pleasure to speak to me. As usual, Bill, you are wrong, wrong, wrong. It is always your pleasure to hear the beautiful, dulcet, round, pear-shaped tones of the Grand Wizard. Hey, wrestling fans, the May issue of Inside Wrestling and The Wrestler are almost all sold out. If you haven't gotten a copy, go down to your newsstand and pick up any remaining copies. In the May issue of Inside Wrestling, there's the inside story of how Pedro Morales became the champion of the world, how the belt passed from Bruno to Ivan Koloff and then to Pedro Morales. In the May issue of The Wrestler, why Pedro Morales had to win that belt from Ivan Koloff. 
That's the May issue of The Wrestler and the May issue of Inside Wrestling. Limited amounts available right now down at your favorite newsstand. We're speaking here with the world's heavyweight champion, Pedro Morales. Pedro, a couple of weeks ago, we had on promoter Vince McMahon, and he told us there's a good possibility that you may wrestle Bruno San Martino. How would you feel about a match like this? Well, uh, I really don't know what to tell you, but uh, I just uh, feel like uh, my very good friend of Bruno, you know, I have a lot of respect for the man because, believe me, he was one of the greatest champions around. He held the title for eight years, you know, and when you hold the title for eight years, you have to be a tough. Right. Would it be a good clean match for a change? Well, I think in my side it will be a nice clean I think so, you know. And I think in the Bruno side, I think he will feel the same way. We're speaking here with Lou Albano. Lou, a couple of weeks ago you gave us the impression that you were going to manage Bulldog Brower, and now we hear that you're not going to manage him. Uh, are you managing Bulldog Brower? No, I am not the permanent manager of Bulldog Brower. However, I have purchased his contract for certain matches. I have made a deal with Brower. I have noted certain weaknesses in Morales, and I have pointed these out to Brower, and I've only taken him on for certain matches. Well, Hey, wrestling fans, Inside Wrestling, The Wrestler, and Mike Rosenberg would like to congratulate Russell Wiener for being chosen as the grand prize winner in the Mystery Voice Contest. Russ will receive two free passes to Sunnyside Garden for this coming Saturday afternoon. Also, the current issues of Inside Wrestling and The Wrestler and an autograph program. Ten runners-up who will be calling later this week will all receive autograph programs. We want to thank everyone that did take the time to enter the contest, and we will be having another contest in a few weeks. Recently, Inside Wrestling received a letter from a fan in another part of the country who said Bulldog Brower was wrestling in his territory with cleaner tactics. So he decided to ask this question of Dick the Bulldog Brower. Now, toward the end of the interview, you've got to listen very carefully as Tony Marino cut in and he and Brower had a little verbal fight. Listen, there's no such thing as cleaner tactics. I don't change or alter my style whatsoever. I go into the ring, I go into win, no matter how. I don't care if the fans are cheering me someplace else. Great, they finally realize the potentialities I have in becoming the next heavyweight champion in the world. And the reason why they cheer me is because they are now smart and intelligent enough to know that Bulldog Brower has got Brower power. Well, the only big-time wrestler around here is Dick the Bulldog Brower. And you take these guys like this Tony Marino and this other uh, world champion, Pedro Morales. I am the world champion, not him. Pedro Morales, as far as I'm concerned, he can't lace up my boots. We can get a proper food on this fat belly, Brower. Listen, the guy, he's talking about fat bellies. He should try and buy a hat to put on his head. He's got a fat head. Until next week, this is Bill After and the staff of Inside Wrestling and The Wrestler wishing you a pleasant evening and reminding you to stay tuned right now for the Ray Pasquin Show.